and welcome to Build. I'm Simon Atkins. As always, we are live from London Town. Now, today I'm joined by a fearless explorer who has travelled to more than 120 countries, making 20 television series along the way. From one Simon to another, would you please welcome Mr. Simon Reeve, ladies and gentlemen? Yay! How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Take microphone. Take microphone, sit down, must sit chat. Down. Yes. Now, before we get started, oh. if you guys at home want to get involved and ask Simon a question, you absolutely can. You can tweet us at Bill Series LDN or leave a comment below this video if you're watching live on Facebook. Simon. Yes, Simon. What's going on, Simon? Oh, I'm having quite a relaxing afternoon. How um, about you, Simon? I'm very well, Simon. It's very nice to have you here, Simon. You were a bit chilly beforehand. Have you warmed up now? I got have the warmed up. We've that got the helps. bright lights. We've got like a, a, an excited audience <laughs> who are... Emanating heat. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Lots of body heat. <laughs> um, so we've got loads to talk about. Okay. But let's start with your, um, your autobiography. My auto, which is out now. It, it is out now. That so is there true. it is, step by step, the life in my journeys. So tell Look us a, bit a little serious bit. Serious in that, don't I? Yes, it's my you blue do. steel We're look. But but you're not that serious a person, are you? I can be, <laughs> but but not here. This is fun. <laughs> so I was on the border of Burma. There, that was well, a bit. You know what? I want to talk about Burma because my heritage is Burmese, and I haven't been to Burma. But we're not going to talk about that just yet. All right. We're going to talk about you and how hard it is to pen an autobiography like this and how long it took you? Uh, yeah, it wasn't so much how long it took me. It was it was much more of a difficult, uh, emotional process, actually, uh, particularly because I had quite a tricky start in life. And I had never really looked back to that time since I became an adult and things started really? going right for me. And I'd never talked to anyone about how low... I got. So everyone always assumes that somebody like me is on the telly. I've been yeah. making programs for quite a while now and I work make, mainly make programs for the BBC. So everyone thinks, oh, you must have had it good all through life and you must have gone to a good school and a good university. And I left school with no real qualifications and I went on the dole. And I was a really no, a real no hope a kid. And I sank really low, you know, I was in, I had a lot of problems with my mental health in, in, in my teens and I really, really struggled. Things got very dark for me and I'd never looked back to that time. And then it comes to doing this book and I realise I've got to think about it and I've got to talk about it and I've got to write about it. So I was telling my wife and my, my, mm. my brother for the first time ever and it was very emotional, actually very hard to do. So Cath Cathartic, I'd say. I, I absolutely was, yeah. and I think also, you know, so many of us, we're confronted by so many images of perfection now, and I think it, as much as we can, it's a good thing for us to accept and be open and honest about our fundamental fragility, and so that was a big part of writing the book for me, was saying... Yeah, I go on adventurous journeys now. I've done some pretty extraordinary things, but I'm a fragile human being, and it was a really dark start for me, but I climbed out of it. And the reviews have been incredible. Chris Evans um, said that he literally couldn't put it down and it's a complete page turner. Mm. Where Are you surprised that so many people are, um, you know, so interested in your personal story? In me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I am completely, yeah. because... I make TV programs and I present shows. I've now made what nearly a hundred TV programs, and most of those are adventurous journeys where I go on an exotic uh, quest yeah. uh, through some far-flung part of the world. But it's generally not been about me and my journey. It's been about the people I meet on the journey and the places I'm going through. So yeah, I've been really humbled quite frankly that people have been interested in my backstory and I've been I've been quite blown away by the response you document the reasons behind some of your most intrepid trips do you mm. think um, readers will be surprised to read what you what you talk about in your book I hope so. I hope there's. I hope they'll be surprised. I mean, I think if it was all um, what they expected, it would be less interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you want to. I I knew I had to give people in the book uh, another part of my little story and and tell them what life has been about for me behind the scenes. But for me, it was very much also about saying, look, I had a difficult start, 
Uh, I know lots of other people have a tricky time as well. Mm. It is possible to get out mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. The title of the book comes from some really critical advice I was given okay. at a difficult moment where I, you know, I was being told, and lots of kids are told now, you can be anything in life, aim for the stars and so on. But I was really struggling every day. And somebody said to me, just take things slowly, take them step by step. And that became my whole mantra in life, just that was how I climbed out of my pit of depression and, and trouble and you know, made a bit of a go of life, I hope. Um, and of course, now you have turned your career into a, well, a road show, not a road show, but you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, you're essentially on the road. I am, and, I know and what you, you mean, yeah, yeah. And you are doing an audience with I am. Simon Reeve. Um, how did all of that come about? It wasn't my idea, all right? It wasn't. No, it wasn't at all. I never would have thought um, that, you know, quite frankly, I would never have thought people would want to turn up at a theatre and hear me gassing away. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I'm a, my little lad and my friends are sick of me telling them stories about when I was in the Congo. You know, and I, I, it didn't, I never thought people would be, would be interested in, in hearing in a theatre. But I had this phone a call. theatre. Theatre. I don't a say it right, a theatre. Um, but I had this phone call. <laughs> Uh, from uh, a, a guy called Giles Cooper and he started talking about this tour and I thought it was going to be church halls or something like that and then I looked him up and he's quite a uh, heavy hitter in the yeah. entertainment industry you know he's produced tours for Take That and Sir Elton John so it's immediately a... the pressure went up um, quite significantly and yeah I've done 50 dates more than 50 dates so far in theatres around the country and so it's been wonderful you did a raft last year and yes. now um, back by pop popular demand <laughs> you have you've done for you've sold out it. the barbican you're yes. finishing in the london palladium yes and you're you're packing out theaters it's theaters the i like you do, you say it better yes nobody is more surprised than i am okay <laughs> but it has been wonderful it's a yeah. really wonderful thing to do and it's nerve-wracking and it's exciting in equal measures and it should be you know i'm walking out I walked out onto the stage at Leeds Town yeah. Hall last night and there were, I think, 1,400 people there. I think we have a picture of Leeds Town Hall have you got one? from last Is night. Is this one I took? That's it. Oh, look, look at that. that. Look at that. I mean, that must be absolutely terrifying. It's it's, it's not like not. Honestly, it's really not because the audiences are lovely. Okay. They really are. And they're, they're there to... They're interested and they're interesting. And it's an honour... And I certainly don't want to mess it up, um, but it hasn't been scary. It's been it's been exciting and thrilling. The first ones were a bit yeah. nerve wracking, I tell you, because yeah. I've never done anything like it. But. So, what's the format of the show, and what what can audiences expect? There's and a are there clips of you know? Do you have is there is there a lot of business going on? There, there's clips, okay. And there's um, I'll show you some some pictures, right? Uh, and uh, I've got some props as well <laughs> that I've brought from my travels, things to show them. Um, if this is completely secret, just between us, yeah. okay? Um, because I wouldn't want to spoil it. But yeah, I show some things that I've taken on my travels, and I show some souvenirs as well from my journeys as well, which is hopefully better than it sounds and gets a few laughs. And uh, it's basically me gassing away fairly endlessly yeah. in, in truth. I don't know how people put up with it, but I talk about extreme situations I've been in. I talk about some absurd situations as well. Obviously, there's been quite a lot of those. Well, we want to hear some of those because right. obviously I called you fearless in the intro. Did you? I did. Right, okay. But because but you didn't hear it because you, were, you it, were outside. Yeah. But what, what are some of, of the most extreme um, situations that you've been in? Well, look, I... I've made, I've been to something like 130 countries. Yeah. And part of my job is to go to extreme places and situations. It doesn't just have to be extremely dangerous, but mm. that's Mogadishu in Somalia at a very difficult time in that country's history. And I'm there. We're really bang up on the front line in Mogadishu there. There was a gun battle w while we were there. We had to be evacuated away from the front line because fighters on the other side were setting up a barrage That's of rocket-propelled grenades to launch an attack on our position. This is uh, me with a group of Somali fighters who were protecting us. This these were our local mercenaries who were looking after us. You look That's so fresh-faced there yeah. beside I do this huge younger. machinery. <laughs> I do. I was younger, it's true. And that's Tupac <laughs> on the main gun there, who was one of our, our guards. They were good guys, and they're looking after us in a very difficult place at a very difficult time. But 
yes, I go to some dangerous places. I honestly do think the world is a very safe and welcoming yeah. place, actually. That's been one of the great joys for me going on these journeys from the beginning is realising, actually, most people are pretty friendly and hospitable. But even him, in... he was a right character, actually. Uh, that's down in southern Russia. He's a Cossack. I love the way you, you remember. Do you, like, if we, no matter what picture we flash up, are you going to know, oh, that Test was such me. and such Test me. back in the day? You can't meet somebody like that without them being seared into your memory. That's the great thing about doing these journeys. Yeah. Now, I love the landscapes. I love the wildlife. But meeting characters, meeting incredible yeah. people, our brothers and sisters on this planet in tragedy or at moments of joy, that, those are extraordinary encounters. And you're oh, that was a weird one. Incredibly lucky. That, that <laughs> looks like a weird one, doesn't it? That's a biological weapons laboratory in Kazakhstan. That was the first day of, for me, filming a TV program. So I look a little bit, what the hell is going on here? You've, yeah. you've been to so many countries, as you said. Um, what's been some of the most memorable places you've been? And I have to ask about Burma. All oh, right. Because my my family heritage is is Burmese. My dad's Burmese, but I've never been mm. to Burma. But is it an incredible country? It's a staggering country. I think the people as well as much as anything are a total revelation. There is you'll know there are so many different ethnic groups yeah. within Burma. So you've got such a rich culture mm. there. But it's been torn apart by fighting and division for so many years. And there's a huge problem at the moment there. It sounds like uh, you'd never think you'd hear this, but with militant Buddhists, this, this is not a yeah. phrase you would what? think you would hear. Yeah, so Mil that, that's, a, that's been a huge problem. There's been ethnic cleansing there. There's been terrible yeah. things happening at the same time as, yes, you can still go there and people are having holidays and seeing incredible temples at the same time. So it's a, it's a rich and varied country with a lot of darkness, a lot of problems but incredible beauty as well if you want a, a problem we went into the east of burma and we had to sneak across the border from thailand illegally into eastern burma to meet the shan state army south and we had to literally run through the jungle in the middle of the night to avoid these army patrols i mean it was just ridiculous I, quite frankly fascinating but do you not like fear for your life and your safety in some of those situations or do you have a, a team around you an expert team that that you, that, you know you feel safe in their hands well i'll not. take a bullet for me yeah, i don't know <laughs> if, i don't know if they do that i might for them but um is this burma this is not this is no. colombia okay and that's a guerrilla from the farc uh, rebel group they were one of the last armed groups so there's a whole peace process going on there um it was a this was in the jungle in colombia honestly i find it really weird seeing these pictures up because you know i'm from west london for goodness sake <laughs> and i cannot believe yeah i can't believe i've made someone it else's the jungles of colombia it's extraordinary but no I, I i sometimes get into a mindset where i feel like we're protected by some sort of force field because we're filming but obviously that's ludicrous we're we're less of a target and we're more of a target. We're protected yeah. and because we're filming and we're also more obvious as well. But I think for anyone traveling, there are simple things you can do to reduce the danger. And, you know, I'm, a, I'm always battering people around by telling them, you've got to make sure you're doing the fundamentals, you're keeping your nails clean when you're away and you're wearing a seatbelt for goodness sake. Because still, <clears> even <throat> in a war zone, you're most likely to have problems because you get into a traffic accident for goodness sake. So what other tips um, should, does Simon Reeve um, recommend for when, when traveling? <laughs> <laughs> My main one is get out of your comfort zone okay it really is you've got to we all have to challenge ourselves just a little bit more to take a few more risks life can be a little bit safe and it, it, a lot of us aren't feeling that our little hearts are going yeah. quite enough i think we have to challenge ourselves a bit that can just be trying this crazy local food just get out you know. and see the culture experience get out and see the culture meet the people you're yeah. absolutely right you know do things that your parents or your grandchildren would be embarrassed about uh eat the local food drink the local booze you know dance on the table if you want to but 
make some memories for don't stay sake. at that resort Do for not the entire the week <laughs> you know and i and i understand you know i know nobody on the telly should be telling other people what to do really but don't spend the whole time stay lying horizontal by the swimming pool it's boring you know you could, should get out there and you should bank some real experiences and i know it's tough because everyone's got yeah. their smartphones and their social media and so on but have a bit of that but then get out and have proper experiences as well um, that was only one little tip. Oh, right, whoa, know. whoa. <laughs> Stick around for episode three and four. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the extended yeah. version of Bill. Um, you do a lot, a great deal of work with kind of conservation and yeah. sustainability. Are you working on anything at the moment? Or um, are you passionate about anything at the moment? Well, there's, there's so many issues for us all to give a damn about. Mm. Um, and so many important things that I really do think we should care about. I think one of the biggest is how we are polluting our planet with this ludicrous single-use plastic is like a curse on all of us. It really is, isn't it? And everywhere I go now, even really remote places, it's washing up on the shores mm. or I'm finding it in the jungles and the deserts. And, you know, this stuff isn't going away and we've all got a responsibility to try and do something about it. But I don't think it's enough for us each individually not just to get a plastic bag at the checkout. Yeah. I think we need, really need to be putting pressure on the politicians and the corporations and the governments to actually pass proper laws banning I this think stuff. So. Because, and, because we've because got to like, do it as a community, not you, individually. You can't go into a supermarket and buy food without... Buying no, single-use plastic. Have you ever? Done, I, I've done that thing where you get it's all this. So hard. You get your fruit, and it's coming in plastic packaging. And I unpackaged it at the checkout in a sort of little protest. And then the the lady at the till looked at me like, I know what you've done, but I'm going to have to clear it up. And then I thought, Oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not really addressing it with the head office, is it? That's what we need to do. Really, we need to go dump yeah. tons of piles of manure and plastic. Uh, in the headquarters of the companies, and then they might do something about it. Do you think it's too late for us to save the planet? I mean, you you would know more than anybody else. We're constantly bombarded by this impending, you know, doom mm. for the for the planet. It's really, it's the trickiest question. Uh, are we? We're certainly taking the biggest gamble our species has ever taken. Yeah. Now, why would we take that risk? We've got to think a bit more long term. I'm already seeing because I'm already hearing about the consequences. Right? So we're not living in a we're, we're living in a time when the world is changing already. And you know, you're flashing up pictures behind here. I saw one of the Kogi people in Colombia who I stayed <laughs> with a few years back. They're remote people, but they are and like hundreds of other people I've met around the world. They're saying we are seeing climate change already. This is Lucy. This is Lucy, a grandma. How do you remember us? You've got I'm never going to forget Lucy. Photographic Lucy. memory, do you? Well, no, no. She was just, ex she was a wonderful, wonderful character. She lives out on the plains in Kenya. And she was telling us how the climate in her part of the world was changing. People in remote parts of the world are feeling it already. So it's already happening. It's not something in the future. And yes, there is still time for us to change it. But we need to get angry and agitated. And really, well, we need to elect some politicians who are going to do something about it. Get saving the planet, people. Mm. Um, let's just go back to your career for a moment. Um, as, as I said, you have had an incredible career. Is there like one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Oh, that's so tricky and such it a is. brilliant... It's, it's a tough question. I think I would say it'll, it'll be all right. Oh, this my little <laughs> self. How funny that, that that's, that's me and my brother James there. God. We were doing all right at that point. I was doing all right. I would say it'll be okay. You know, um, I think I had a very tough time when I was a lad. And I would just give the, I would give this step-by-step -step advice, I think, to myself. If I'd had that advice a little bit earlier, it might have got a bit better. I think I would have said as well, don't worry, it's okay to be fragile. Because a lot of us, you know, when we're young, even yeah. now, we, we think, oh my goodness, nobody must see how fragile I am. I must put up this front to the world. But actually, we are all fragile. I've met some of the toughest people on this planet. And the most interesting ones admit mm. to their failings and, and their, their insecurities. And their insecurities. And it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it is okay. And I think that's, especially with, you know, with the, with the rise of social media, mm. where everyone just feels like this need to, to have constant perfection. Yeah. It's, it's good advice. It's all right. It's okay to be fragile, everyone. Don't you think? Absolutely. <laughs> um, 
let's just talk about before we finish up your series. So you have been to Burma, you've been to Russia. The yeah. last series that you did was uh, Mediterranean. Travelling around the Mediterranean. So yes. what's next for you? And will you ever get sick of doing documentaries? I, doubt, I really don't think I'll get sick of it. I'm sure eventually the job will be clawed away from me and given to somebody <laughs> younger and funnier, no doubt. But, you know, while I'm still allowed to do it, while people put up with me, I'd love to. It's an amazing thing to do. I learn so much. And none of us, I, I, none of us who work on the, the projects, none of us take it for granted. Yeah. You know, these are incredible adventures to be part of. But I'm doing a new series. Yeah, I'm filming a series where I'm travelling the length of the Americas. Wow, so from you started top filming? To toe. We've just started filming. We've done okay. one leg of it so far from Alaska down to Vancouver. Okay. Temperatures of minus 35 and some really big, amazing landscapes and characters. Wow, I can imagine amazing wonderful. backdrops. Mm -hmm. And what global issues are you dealing with? During well, these goodness. Yeah, our, our changing planet, the plight of remote indigenous people. Um, in Vancouver, we were out with uh, uh, drug addicts who are uh, trying to get uh, clean injection sites. Um, lots of big issues and lots of really fun encounters as well with um, Caveman Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Who's uh, you could it, it probably he, he does what he says on the tin. Okay, he really does. He was a wonderful character, and um, he took me to drink the world's weirdest cocktail. All right, it's called the Sour Toe Cocktail. And steal yourselves. It's a drink very Sour much toe. like this with somebody's amputated toe. It's oh. And so not the even toes so, got to so touch not the an animal's amputation, no, a human somebody amputated who, toe. Somebody who'd had frostbite, yeah. And this was their, this is their, <laughs> uh, there's a, what's his name? Captain Johnny, I think it was. <gasps> he puts on his sailor's hat and he makes you drink the, the, the sour toe cocktail. But honestly, you'd all do it, I promise you, because it's incredibly brilliant and is memorable. It tasty? Nah. Well, the, actually, the, the whiskey was... <laughs> The whiskey was, the toe tasted a bit salty. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I think that's what we all love about watching your documentaries is that you do deal with some very serious issues, but there's so much light and shade. Thank you for saying that. There for is. Me. I totally agree. That's the whole, that's our lives for all of us. Um, and it's been something we've worked into my programs from the, the beginning, both, as you say, the light, the glory, the yeah. joy of a place, the beauty and the shade, the issues. And that is the reality of all our lives. And we don't shy away from it in my programs. And we try and learn about both aspects of life mm. because I think it helps us to understand a country and a people and our world a bit more and love it more, I hope. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I've loved this. Thank Unfortunately, you. it's all we've got time for, but good no. luck with an audience. Um, with the rest of the tour and also with the new series. Thank you um, so much. An so audience much. with Simon Reeve can be, um, you can get tickets on his website and Simon's fascinating memoirs, Step by Step, is also out now. You can also watch Mediterranean with Simon Reeve on BBC iPlayer. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Ripped and Chiselled, the cast of Magic Mike, so do join us then. But for one last time, please give it up for Mr. Simon Reeve. You're very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.